Hi, I'm David Bell. Welcome to this episode of Through the Year with John Wesley. It's all about the remarkable William Morley. Today's world is dominated by innovation. Technology has changed everything. Social media and smartphones enable instant communication around the planet. Now, imagine a Methodist clergyman from the Victorian era, someone at the top of his game, living in New Zealand in the year 1900. What would he think about how we live today? He'd probably be just as astonished as we are at all the huge changes of the last 20 years. Just as importantly, what do we think and know about his world? Let's begin by asking some basic questions. What were the key theological concerns in his time? What were the clergy and laity really thinking about? What did they talk about? What did the clergy preach about? How did congregations react to new ideas in 1900? Did the hard theological issues ever really get discussed by ordinary church members in their homes, maybe around the Sunday roast? What they thought about the Bible is the pivotal point. The Methodist leaders were in fact very liberal, far ahead of their time. They saw the Bible as a human composition. It was full of myths and legends and old gods. In 1900, no lesser figure than the Reverend Dr. William Morley could say exactly that of Maori origins. Quote, In the story of their migrations, fact, fiction, history and mythology are strangely blended. These are exactly the terms of reference of biblical criticism in the Victorian era. He wrote that in one of the most remarkable books to come back then. It was the history of Methodism in New Zealand. It was to celebrate the turn of the 19th to the 20th century. Anyone interested in the social history and fabric of New Zealand, especially Methodism, can't go past Morley. In fact, my generation and previous generations of cler clergy always refer to that book as Morley. To return to Morley's comment, it was an elegant comment by which to open up important themes about Methodist history in colonial New Zealand, and it didn't fall on stony ground. The ground had been well prepared in Methodism by a series of notable clergy figures. These included the Reverend A. R. Fitchett of the Wesleyan Connection and the Reverend Daniel Dutton of the Primitive Methodists. Both these characters are discussed in Through the Year with John Wesley. These two were outstanding, like Morley, and significantly both left in order to find happier, more congenial ministries in other denominations. Fitcher went to the Anglicans, Dutton to the Presbyterians. And eventually, Morley himself left to work for the Methodists in Australia. But that was no surprise, for he had been a president of the Australasian Conference before the separation of the two countries. So what exactly did this character achieve? He had arrived in Auckland in February 1864, a young Methodist clergyman. He married Hannah Buttle, a daughter of one of the pioneer missionary families. He had a long, happy marriage and family life marked by all the usual vicissitudes of being moved from pillar to post by Methodist stationing. He served as the connectional secretary of the church and by the time he published the Centennial History, had lived 36 years a Methodist minister and visited every circuit and mission station up and down New Zealand at least twice. Given what travel meant in those times, we begin to see what kind of determination was required. His interests and appointments took him into the worlds of education, administration, fund management, and obviously history and journalism. As a former principal of Trinity Methodist Theological College in Auckland, I can't help but marvel at what he did and achieved. And it was with considerable pleasure that I arranged the highest quality digitization of Morley, and made that freely available to anyone with an interest in the history of theology. All the photographs we've been watching are, of course, from that remarkable book. Next week we see uh, the Reverend Daniel Dutton problems over the science-faith interaction. So, thanks for watching. 
Catch you next time.